This hot balloon experiment physics video is segment 8b of the CNS Ionizing Radiation Workshop series of videos. In the hot balloon experiment video, we inflated a balloon, sealed the stem with a clamp, hung the balloon, and rubbed it with a microfiber cloth to induce a static charge. This static charge causes the balloon to collect positive ions, dust particles, and aerosols from the air. After 30 minutes or so, we deflated the balloon and placed it atop the Geiger. The system was left counting overnight. The number of counts in each minute interval decayed to background levels in about six hours. We open the data file with Notepad, select all the data, copy it to the clipboard, and paste it into an Excel spreadsheet. We format the first column as time of day. We insert a scatter plot, an XY plot, for the data. We stretch the graph to fill the screen. The interactive chart of the nuclides is the source of the data we need to examine the physics of our balloon experiment. We enter U-238 in the nucleus box and click on Go. We then select Zoom Level 1. Uranium-238 is highlighted. The values in the box include half-life, isotopic abundance, and decay mode. Alpha decay reduces the number of neutrons by 2 and the number of protons by 2. Moving to the left, diagonally down, two rows and two columns from uranium-238 to thorium-234. This is a simplified chart with uranium-238 in the top right corner and lead-206 in the bottom left corner. The neutron number columns we don't need are skipped. Thorium-234 undergoes beta decay. An electron is emitted and the nuclide neutron number reduces by 1, while the proton number increases by 1, moving up to the left to protactinium-234. Protactinium-234 beta decays to uranium-234. Uranium-234 alpha decays to thorium-230. Thorium-230 alpha decays to radium-226. Radium-226 Alpha decays to radon-222. Radon is a noble gas. It is free to escape the local environment. It can blow with the wind or migrate inside buildings. Radon-220 may also be present from the thorium-232 decay series in the local environment. But in this case, radon-222 is predominant. The hot balloon experiment starts with radon-222 in the air near where the charged balloon is hanging. Radon-222 alpha decays to polonium-218. Polonium is a heavy metal once again. Polonium-218 has two decay modes. The majority are alpha decay, so we won't discuss the beta decay to astatine-218 and then to radon-218. The polonium-218 alpha decay moves us to lead-214. Lead-214 in turn beta decays to bismuth-214. Bismuth-214 beta decays to polonium-214, and polonium-214 alpha decays to lead-210. This isn't the end of the uranium decay series, but the rest is not really relevant to our balloon. This list shows the half-lives of the nuclides of interest. With its three-minute half-life, the radioactivity of polonium-218 captured onto the balloon would have been very low after about six half-lives, 18 minutes or so. The lead 214 half-life of 27 minutes would dominate the decay once the polonium 218 is done. The bismuth 214 decay would follow the lead 214 decay, extending the average half-life. The polonium 214 alpha decay follows each bismuth 214 decay quite quickly on average. This little chart shows the alpha decays of radon. Radon-222 has a half-life of 3.8 days. 
giving it significant time, on average, to escape the environment of the precursor heavy metals. In many areas, thorium is more abundant than uranium, and radon-220 is the corresponding noble gas step with a much shorter half-life. Lastly, the uranium-235 decay series includes radon-219 that has an even shorter half-life. This figure shows the data from a pair of balloon experiments. The black data set corresponds to a test with only the balloon. No paper absorber was introduced. The red data set corresponds to a test with the paper absorber inserted for the full collection time. The maximum values without a paper absorber would not have been the same. The differences in the shapes of the curves are apparent. The red data shows that the beta gamma counterweights were increasing for the first 20 minutes or so. This is consistent with the alpha decay of polonium-218. The profile of the majority of the curve is consistent with a half-life of about 30 minutes. This illustration shows the collapsed balloon atop the Geiger. Alpha particles emitted from the top side of the balloon cannot penetrate the balloon walls into the Geiger. Beta gamma radiation from both sides of the balloon can reach the Geiger. This figure shows estimates of the uranium concentration at the surface of the Earth for much of North America. The uranium concentration data was estimated using airborne gamma spectra surveys to infer the concentration of members of the decay series. Presently, it no longer exists on the internet in this form. We hope that this video has introduced you to the physics of the hot balloon experiment. Using more sophisticated instruments, Dr. Wachowicz and other physicists have investigated the behavior of radon nuclides and their decay products extensively.